people can get a little bit of a look at it. Now I'm gonna just talk for just a couple minutes. It's not a teaching. This is just so people can start to understand where to start looking, mm -hmm. okay? Now, this group is called the Shabbatian Frankist Messianic Satanic Cult. And they've been around, uh, this is Shabbatay Zevi, was mm -hmm. the first guy, he's a Jewish guy, who became one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Jewish messiahs in all of Jewish history. And he lived in the 1600s, and he proclaimed himself to be the Messiah and the King. Mm -hmm. And he developed a whole concept of religious practices. And he had over a million followers of Jews through the Middle East and through Europe following this guy. When he died, um, a guy named Frank took over. Okay, I didn't put him in here, but he took over and he perpetuated the whole thing. And uh, Zabatai Zevi, if I remember right, his daughter, uh, also helped promote um, his belief system after he died. But I don't want to go into a lot of history about it, but the bottom line is is that this cult exists to this day, and it's in Europe, mm -hmm. and it runs everything. Now, I can't tell you the exact few people at the top, but I've been able to narrow it down to this particular group, this mm -hmm. ideology. Mm -hmm. Um they were heavy into sexual perversions and human sacrifices. Mm. And they created what is called a Lorian Kabbalah. It's a Jewish mysticism. Mm -hmm. So all this stuff in satanic rituals, all this stuff is all mixed in. Okay. Now I watched a guy on YouTube the other day. I don't remember his name. He didn't want to talk much about it, but he let enough information out. He was a, a guy that was well known through Hollywood and he used to rub shoulders with Hollywood actors and all that kind of stuff. And the, the, the ones at the top are heavily into this satanic rituals, mm -hmm. pedophilia, sacrificing of children. And what happens is when they sacrifice children, they draw the virgin spiritual energy from the child as they torture it and they shed the blood and they drink the blood. Mm -hmm. I'm not going into any more than that because mm -hmm. I don't need to. This is just to give people an idea of where this thing is going. In the book of Revelation I translated, you will see bits and pieces of these concepts of what these people do in what the beast system does. Mm -hmm. Okay? I didn't understand a lot of what I was writing at the time. I just came into this not too long ago. So this is after the fact. Now, one of the interesting things about this group is they want the Messiah to come so badly and the king to sit in a temple in Jerusalem. Now, this is in the 1600s. Mm -hmm. They've had this, this dogma since the 1600s that a temple should be built in Jerusalem for the end times and that a Jewish king Messiah will come and sit on that throne. Mm -hmm. This is not a new concept. Mm -mm. Today, they, they, it's taught as if like it's a new concept, and I kind of thought it was in a way. But this goes back to Shabbatai Zevi mm -hmm. and his organization. Here's the interesting thing, because you say, well, John, how's this tie into, you know, uh, the letter of the law? I'm going to show you, because in the beginning, we start off with saying that the law can cut this way and it can cut that way. Mm -hmm. Your lives out there depend on what choice you make as to what law you're going to be under. Mm -hmm. It's either going to be under the B system or it's going to be under Yahweh's system. One mm -hmm. or the other, that's it. There's no in between. There's going to be a little while where you're going to get squeezed and you're going to have to make a decision. These guys felt that the Messiah was not coming back fast enough. So he came up with a doctrine that the Torah needed to be violated. Mm -hmm. Because their premise was that if you violate the Torah, if it says thou shalt not steal, you steal. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery, have as much adultery as you possibly can. Trade your wife off with other men, all kinds of, these guys are into all this stuff. You're gonna read the history, mm -hmm. okay? And they felt that the only way, they wouldn't say Yahweh, but the creator, the only way he would send his Messiah to sit on the throne in Jerusalem is that there's so much sin and wickedness on the earth, like in the days of Noah, mm. that the Messiah would have to come quickly. So we're going to expedite this. Mm -hmm. 
See, that's man's righteousness. Mm -hmm. He's going by a law that he himself is deciding that he has the control to bring the Messiah back when he wants. Mm -hmm. You see where this righteousness of man goes? Mm -hmm. You see where this kind of law goes? So this guy started teaching all his one million converts to start sinning against the Torah and indulge in Kabbalah and satanic worship. It's alive and well to this day. And so I started off by saying that this virus that went around put everybody into a, a tailspin. And now the numbers are starting to come out. We're starting to realize it was all a hoax. Mm. And Yahweh said to me, and I said it to my wife, when I saw the picture of the virus, how it had, it's called a corona. Corona means crowns. This virus is designed to be a crown uh, of kings, that kings are coming, and it's going to help mold and shape people around the world to get them to accept this Messiah when he comes because it's going to get them to give up their rights. Mm -hmm. They're Yahweh-given rights, right? Again, I'm not trying to be political. This is not my point. Mm -hmm. I'm not a political person. I'm just talking concepts here. This is a king virus. Mm -hmm. It came to conquer. And that's exactly what it did around the world. There are a lot of people that didn't buy into it. I never bought into it. Yahweh told me, you do what you got to do. You got to work. You do everything you got to do. Nothing's going to touch you. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You've seen everybody going into pandemonium around you. Don't fall into that trap. It's a hoax. And I'm going to show you that we were warned ahead of time in 2012 that this thing was coming and we didn't see it i didn't see it but i i found this 2012 olympics if you go in and you look up on youtube and you look at the opening ceremonies of the 2012 olympics i think it's roughly 20 minutes in something like that i don't remember you're going to come to this section where they wheel a whole bunch of hospital beds out into the stadium with children on them nurses taking care of the sick mm -hmm. now i want to ask a question from a logical perspective what does this have to do with athletics what does it have to do with sports and competition matter of fact watch all of the ceremony and there's several hours of it between the end and the beginning mm -hmm. okay and you tell me these smokestacks coming up in the stadium with people walking around decrepit and with old clothes and they can hardly walk. What does that all have to do with sports? It doesn't. They have a world audience and they've choreographed these things because they are legally showing you what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And if you don't figure it out, not our problem. Let me go to the next slide. Here's like a grim reaper waving a wand. I didn't want to show the video. I just took snapshots. Mm -hmm. And he's spreading what I would consider to be a curse into the crowds. And if you look, <clears throat> well, some of it's kind of hard. But if you look, uh, these black people in black, not with the umbrellas, but if you look at the black outfits with hoods on them, mm -hmm. like over in there, Mm -hmm. Not the best picture in the world. These are Mary Poppins that came out of the sky. I'll show that in a minute. But these other ones, they have these green eyes and they're dark figures. They're a disease. Mm -hmm. And they come, everybody's dancing and you watch it. They're all dancing, having a good time. Everything's festive. And all of a sudden, this, he weighs a wand. All these diseases come in. And everybody's running to a panic and the diseases are chasing the children out of their beds. Okay. That goes on for a minute or so, whatever it was. And then this one here really got me. Some people say, well, who is that? Take a good look at it. You know who that is? Boris Yeltsin. Boris Johnson, I'm sorry. Boris Johnson, who is the prime minister of England right now. Mm -hmm. He's sick in his sick bed. And if you look in the video, you see they spinning him around in circles like they're turning his life upside down. Okay, because he's sick in the bed. Now, this guy just became prime minister a few months back. How did they know in 2012 he was going to be a leader of England 
and that he was going to get sick with this virus and be in the bed. How did they know that? That was seven years ago, mm -hmm. eight years ago, mm -hmm. actually, eight years ago. And I'm like, that's freaky. That, but this is all symbolism. It's all symbolism. Now, what happens is, in the midst of the pandemonium, all the Mary Poppins comes out of the sky and land in the stadium. Mary Poppins is a nanny. Symbolic of a nanny state. Mm -hmm. The government. The government's going to come in and solve the problem, and they're going to come and console all the sick people and take care of them and watch over them, along with the nurses and the doctors. They're going to solve the problem because we're the only one that you can rely on to solve your problem with the pandemic that you have. Mm -hmm. And here you can see some of these black figures over here in the front on the left side of the screen. The, the nannies are coming down, and they have authority. And you can't see it now because I'm blear, blurry, but you can see they have these umbrellas and they're chasing the diseases out of there, running them out of the stadium. And then what you see in the video after that, all the children are back in their bed. They're jumping up and down. Everybody's celebrating and screaming and yelling and, have, and it goes back to a party again. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me, what does this have to do with sports? It don't. That's the whole point. None of them do. And that leads me to the conclusion of this thing, which is if you start diligently taking your time to watch this narration, and you can read it as well, and you can download the whole book of Revelation uh, retranslated, Yahweh's indictment against his wife and her ultimate redemption. With this in mind, if you start sitting down and reading the text, and try to absorb it with an open mind, you're going to start seeing what I'm talking about. You're going to start to understand where to look and be prepared for when this thing starts to get really, really bad. Mm -hmm. This was just a dry run. Mm -hmm. It's going to get a whole lot worse than this. They want to know how many people were going to buy this hook, line, and sinker. And unfortunately, way too many people did. Mm 